I am working on Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper. This is a five by seven, and I'm going to be doing this with a watercolor base and then colored pencil on top. I have not pre-stretched or pre-sized this paper because I'm not gonna be adding that much water. This is only 140 pounds, so it's not a super, super heavyweight paper, but we should be fine just because it's not, I'm not doing the background, the background's staying white. It is taped down with an acid-free, a pH neutral masking tape. That is important because you wanna keep in mind when you use masking tape, like the, the I see people use blue painter's tape all the time. Heck, I've done it in the past. All of that leaves a little bit of residue on the artwork. And that residue is not acid-free or pH neutral. We don't want that staying long-term because that could cause yellowing over time. Even though we don't see it when we remove the tape, that could be a concern. The alternative, if you don't have tape like this, you can always cut your paper a little bit bigger and then cut off wherever the tape was so that none of that is left over. That actually works out just fine. So that may be worth it to you to go that route versus using spending more for the low uh, or the pH neutral acid-free tape. Now I've got my distilled water over here. I've got my watercolor. I'm using Schminka. Schminka, Schminka. I think I'm saying that. Who knows? I don't say anything right. And then I've got distilled water. Now here's the important thing. This is what I use for, I have two of these when I work in watercolor. With watercolor, it is unlike any other medium I work in, in that I need a separate container to, to rinse out my brushes and one for just using water that I'm mixing in on the artwork because the dirty water will affect the colors with, colored, or with watercolor. Doesn't matter for ink tents, doesn't matter for acrylic painting. There's a video that tells you, you need to use two separate waters for acrylic painting. Dude is making crap up, like just to sound fancy. That isn't an acrylic painting thing. It lets you know he really does not know what he's talking about. But moral of that story, if you've seen that video, you know what I'm talking about. Watercolor does need two separate containers, one to rinse brushes, one to load brushes. All of the supplies that I'm using tonight are linked in the video description if you're painting along with me. There is also the link to this reference photo, so you are welcome to paint this guy with me. So I'm going to be using these reddish browns here. Now normally what I would like to do, these are really handy to make yourself a little watercolor list so you know what that paint looks like. In comparison, let me grab this, I'll show you if this is correct. So these line up with, let's pull that up. You can see a little bit better. These line up with each other. So I know exactly, like if I look at this yellow, that is not, there we go, we can put them next to each other. Look how much darker that looks because it's a little muddy with other colors I've got on it, but that's the actual color. I also have a star rating, so I know which of these colors are going to be light fast. I have this one, this indigo blue is not light fast, so I can't use that one. But this lets me know whatever colors are in here, except for apparently this one. I don't know why that's blank. And then this bottom section is what matches up with my browns and such. So I can very easily see which colors I want as I'm working. And I usually just keep that little board off to the side on my easel so I can quickly refer to it. I'm just gonna start by getting a light layer of yellow on his eye. I've got a bunch of brushes just thrown out over here. It works. So this one is a Mimic brush, the Creative Mark, a number six round. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of yellow. Which yellow was that? They're both about the same. I honestly can't tell the difference between these two. So we're just going to fill that in. Oh, that's the pupil. What am I doing? That goes here. Luckily, that doesn't matter because I have to put black over it. Look at me not paying attention to my reference photo. There's actually a line that goes across there that I didn't draw in. I'm gonna let that yellow dry though before I fill it in with black. Actually, I can lift some of that. Oh, this brush is dirty. Why is this, did I not clean this very well last time? Apparently not. Let's just go ahead and smudge that. Can I lift, lift some of that up? Just so that when I go over with a black, I don't end up with super green from having too much white or yellow there. Okay, that works. And while that dries, I'm gonna switch over to a little bit of blue. And this is where I love that I've got my little uh, board over here so I know, don't pick that one, that one's not light fast. The rest of them that I have are. I'm gonna go with the fourth blue over. It looks like a nice phalo blue or something very close. And I just have my paper towel in as I go. I just dab that before I hit the paper so that I don't smudge it everywhere. Just gonna put a little bit there. I'm gonna wipe some of that off. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush and just lift up some white, or I'm sorry, not white. I'm just gonna let that blue fade out. 
Now the nice thing is when you plan on going over something like this with a colored pencil, like I'm going to here, I do not have to be very good with this. Like I can be pretty bad at watercolor, like really bad at watercolor and still make it look amazing because the colored pencil will fix anything I screw up. So it's wonderful. But the colored, the great thing about doing the underpainting like this with the watercolors, it saves a ton of time. So let's go ahead and start pulling up some browns. Let's see this brown. Actually, this one looks really good too. And I'm just gonna start laying that in there. I just need to get that fairly dark. That's got way too much water on the brush. Now, normally when you work with watercolor, it's gonna be a lot easier if you work flat on a table. I cannot do that because of my back and my neck. So I'm upright at an easel, but that's not going to stop me. I have to adjust my techniques a little bit so that I don't have the paint run all over the place. I can't use as much watercolor. Like if I wanna put the watercolor on thicker, then I need to, um, I need to go ahead and work flat for those small spots. But like as far as a full painting night goes, I cannot handle like working flat long term. And I don't even need this to be perfectly smooth, but I do want my brush strokes to go about the right direction. This colored pencil is going to hide a lot of this. See how I'm curving that back around the direction of the feathers. I want to get a little bit lighter in through here. Use a little bit more water. Now watercolor and colored pencil work amazingly well as a mixed media. You guys know, if you've been around for very long, you know I love ink tins. I actually did the design the tins for the pencils and the blocks, the dolphin and the, the sea turtle. However, colored pencils don't stick real well to it. So if I want to do a mixed media with colored pencil, watercolor is definitely my go-to. I'm not really sure why colored pencil, or like it's just the difference of the texture, but, but colored pencil does not stick. Like even the ink tins pencils don't stick that great once you get a lot of layers on there. I'm just using this brush. I'm going to switch to a filbert, a small do I have one over here. You don't belong here. I don't even know why you're in this group. Got brushes all over the place. I could have sworn I saw a filbert earlier. Where is it? It was a mimic. Eh, good enough. So this will give me some of the look of bigger feathers. Again, we're gonna go over all of that with my colored pencil. Pull some of that same reddish brown in. I'm gonna do this closer to this area. Let those fade together. I'm gonna let that overlap a bit. Again, just watching the direction of those feathers. And this one is another Creative Mark Mimic brush. This is a quarter inch flat. See how I'm just watching the direction of those feathers. Some of that is darker. We can go ahead and start pulling some of the black in. I think I'll do a lot of that with a flat brush. We'll switch to this guy for the little stuff. these feathers switch direction. And that's what you really wanna watch. If you wanna make it look like the feathers, that you've got that more three-dimensional look, you don't need every detail exact, but you do need to watch the direction they're going. Like right here, 
these start going, you've got long horizontal lines because of the way that the feathers are aiming at the viewer. Same thing, see how I'm keeping this pretty sketchy. It is a little bit watery though. I'm gonna soak some paint back up with the, or water with the brush. So I'm just dabbing it on my paper towel and then soaking it up. I don't care if it's perfectly even, if some areas are darker, great. It looks like unintentional, like I shaded without actually having to shade. So I don't need it perfect. That needs a little bit more water though. If you start getting dry marks, like what I'm getting here, that just lets you know you need some more, more water on that brush, like I do now again. A little too much, so let's pull some of that back up. So I'm just taking my brush, I dab most of it off, and I'm just gonna lift some of that. That's a bit heavy-handed there. And I can put another layer to darken this up with the watercolor, or I can do that with the colored pencil. Either way would work. But I'm, as I go and fill this in, see how I'm not getting it completely solid? I'm leaving some areas where it's a little bit lighter. That actually is on purpose. It ends up adding detail without having to put in a bunch of work trying to get perfect detail. While we're working with the black, let's go ahead and come up here. A little bit more paint and water on the brush. Now the highlight, if I fill it in with too much black, it's not the end of the world because I can use opaque col uh, lighter colored pencils to fix that. But I'm just gonna leave it to make my life a little easier if I can. But like I said, if it happens and you fill in where you didn't mean to, it's not a big deal. The colored pencils can fix so, so much. Got this darker ring, it's a little thinner around here. And then he's got his little eyebrow. Look, already he's starting to come together. Let's see, we've got a little bit darker in through here. And then we've got this dark area back here. And we'll have a lot of these little hairs sticking out. Remember, the harder you push with your brush, the thicker your line is going to be. So even though this is a larger brush at a number six, I can still get a thin line as long as I'm using a really light hand. If you push hard, you get a thick line. all these little wispy guys sticking out. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more with the, the brown for a bit and then we'll come back to the black. Oops, we're gonna dab some of that water off. Just a solid color right now. And don't worry, if you find yourself worrying too much about color or getting really hung up on that, that isn't what's gonna make the difference in your work looking good. It's about your values. Are your darks dark enough, your lights light enough? I don't care if I have the perfect brown, but is, are my darks dark enough and lights light enough? That's what I need to focus on. I'm gonna pull some black now and mix that right up along this edge and pull that down. 
let that blend while that that brown paint is still wet. I want that to just give me a nice soft blend together. Let those colors bleed a little bit. Oh, he's already coming out cute. I'm, I'm excited for this guy. I think he's going to be a really good one. Look at the little wispy horn there. I don't want to go too crazy because I've got to come back through with lighter browns, but I can get the hint of some of these darks. I'm going to darken up that edge again to get some nice variation in there. Oops, that's paint on it still. Let's rinse that off. I just want to take a little bit of water right around that edge so it fades. Now that's interesting. Dolphin Soul said, last week Lisa says, don't use straight blacks, use purples, and now she is. Depends on what you're doing. There is never an always. One of the reasons that I didn't want, want um, last week straight blacks on that piece is that I was using a lot of oranges. Black and orange don't play nice together. Brown and, and black look wonderful together. So it depends. There's never a hard rule. I'm definitely not one of those artists who's like anti-using black paint. Um, I normally want it mixing with something else and that's what we're having happen here. I'm letting it mix in with my brown. So at no point is it like just this harsh flat black. But that's actually a good point. It, it depends on what it is. I mean, even if you look at the Patreon uh, project we had this week, the cichlid fish, that was bright yellows and oranges. I had a buffer of purple before I got into the blues and the blacks because black up against orange and yellow, that comes out looking pretty, that, that's hard to make look good. And I don't care if any of these feathers are in the exact right place. Close is good enough for this. Remember, most people are not going to see your reference photo. I mean, you guys see mine because obviously, but you don't need to show people your reference photo. It doesn't, they'd have to see the photo to know your feathers weren't exact. That was always one of the things that made me laugh. I remember when I first started posting on social media, you'd always get some person that, I don't know if it was like an insecurity on their part or what it was. Well, we need to see your reference photo. Let's see your reference photo. Even in the early days of YouTube, when I wasn't teaching, I was just sharing, like, look what I painted. Well, I need to see your reference photo. No, you really don't. Um, why? So you can be judgy because I know that's where you're going with this. Don't feel like you need to post your reference photo because I intentionally will choose for things not to look like the reference photo too. Um, you don't have to show everyone that photo. The work on its own. What does your paint, is your painting good on its own? That's what, what we're looking for. Your end result. Not that it's exact to the reference photo. The reference photo is a guideline. I'm just going to get some little hints of feathers in there with the darker brown. And that darker brown is the same brown I used here, by the way. The difference, actually, I'm getting enough water on here. I want to dry this to tighten the paper up. But um, I'm using less water, so that's why it's darker. So the reason that I, I dried that there, it had nothing to do with needing the paint not to blend together or bleed together or nothing to do with that. It was simply my paper was warping and I wanted to use the hair dryer to dry it back into place before it decided to dry on its own to warp. Also. Yeah, and if it weren't, back to the reference photo, if it weren't for the fact that I was needing to show you guys what I'm looking at and what I'm choosing to change, like because I'm teaching, it's different and I'm, gonna, and I'm going to show you. If it's simply, I want to show people, look at the pretty painting I did. You do not have to show them your reference photo. And here's a few other tips. You don't need to tell them how long it took. People always will do the, non-artists will do this. How long did that take you? Now, they're not necessarily meaning to be rude, but what they're essentially asking is how much do you make an hour? 
because when they find out like, oh, you only spent eight hours on that, you're charging $1,200, oh my God. No, you're not paying for eight hours of work, you're paying for a lifetime of experience. Like those are not the same thing at all. So don't, like certain questions you'll get from people, you are not, you don't owe them anything. Um, and the people who want who want to see a reference but aren't demanding to see it, those aren't people who are gonna buy from you, those aren't customers. I don't care if I make those people happy. So that just a few things to keep in mind. Don't let it bother you when somebody asks for these things, but also don't feel like you owe them, like that you need to um, bend over backwards for everything that somebody asks. Okay, so we're getting into a little, oops, I'm gonna go with a little bit more water there because I want that to be a little bit lighter. There we go. Now the areas I want lighter, I'm not, I don't need to add um, water, white to them because that will make them more opaque, the white that I have anyway. What I'm doing is just adding water so that it's more translucent. And letting the white of the paper show through. And I can go a little bit darker than what I want that end result to be here just because I'm gonna go on top of the, I know it's gonna be white colored pencil over this. Oh, see how these curve a little bit? Just watch the direction that the, the feathers are moving. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue for under these cooler areas. And I'm gonna take a bit of brown right along the edge of the black. I can really go over the black too. It doesn't really matter, it's just gonna make it darker, which is fine. But this way I get a transition from the black before it hits the white. That little extra detail will look so good. Now a lot of this is gonna get cut off by the mat, but I would rather fill in a bit too far, like come down farther than what I need the, the end piece to be, so that nothing, is, I don't have a white border that the mat is not quite covering. Same thing, we've got a little bit of brown over here. And I don't care if I'm perfect with this one's reddish brown, this one's more of a, a yellowy brown. I don't care, I just want some variation. Honestly, that's all I, I I'm looking at, looking for here. Okay, so we've got a little bit more brown right around the edge there. Start darkening a few areas up in here and see these are the side to side ones. Let that lighter color show through. Got some of the black. A little bit around the eye there. Now we've got this gorgeous lavender around his eye. I'm gonna to switch to the round brush and I'm going to use, looking through here, this color is pretty close, close enough anyway, so the second one over. And that's pretty much, I mean, when I do this, it, look how important that is. That just looks black. I need to have this to look at and see it's this color right here. This is why having one of these little guys is so handy. It's also part of why I have no interest and buying more colors. Whenever I get started with a new medium, I always wanna buy every single color. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty full and happy with what I have on the watercolor because that's enough to sort through. I'm gonna come on top of this with white to give it the light color over it. We'll have some blue now. I'll use the same blue I used earlier. That's gonna look weird till I go over it with the white and shade it properly. So don't let that scare you, it's not staying that way. Now I need a decent amount of water I'm mixing in with my blue at this point. Let's move you over so you can see a little bit. I'm just thinning it with a lot of water but I've got to dab some of that off on my paper because that is going to be too dark. 
see how it's just a very, very light blue. I can go a little bit darker there. And this is another area. It's not the exact same blue as my photo. I don't care. Just need some variation. Missing whole spot of brown right here where the beak is. Let's fill that in now. So we've got this darker shadow that runs right through here. It's a really pretty reddish brown. I'm going to pull a bit more of that. So mixing these two. Again, right, that reddish brown I'm putting right around the black. And what else do I need? I can do a little bit more black here before we switch over to colored pencils. Just fix the shape on some of these. A few little wisps in here. to find some of these feathers a little bit while I've got this black out. Got a little bit of black right around the ends of some of these feathers. So I'm just cleaning up a little bit of detail and then most of that will be done with the colored pencils. The watercolor goes on way faster, so if I can block in a lot with this, that I'm not going to worry about that. That's easier to get clean with the pencils. Let's see, I've got a little bit right around here. And a bit more brown. Now you want to make sure anywhere where you're using colored or the watercolor, you've got to have that done before you start with the colored pencil. Because once you start with the colored pencil, the colored pencil is not going to stick on top well. And even if it sticks on parts, it's not archival. You don't want to put a water-based product on top of a wax or oil base because it's some of it will start to rub off over time. Okay, where else do I want a little bit more color saturation? That's all I'm doing now. I mean, everything's pretty well mapped in. A little bit of this, oh, I need more water. That is dragging on the paper. Right around the edges of the black, I'm putting this, this reddish brown on both sides. A little too much water, so let's pull that out just so I get that more feathery look. I need to get the color saturation a bit darker over here as well. See how the feathers curve here? Oh, I forgot this entire area has more black. I need to come back through there a bit. A 
little bit more of the dark right around this eye. Okay, then I'll get some black. Just get these little lines here. I'm gonna paint those in. You can do that part with a colored pencil too. It doesn't really matter. I think the watercolor just goes a little bit faster. few little wisps sticking out here. And I think that's probably good enough that I can start with the colored pencil. So let's try this and I'll switch over to pencils. I'm going to start with black because it's easy. Once I find it. Okay, let's get some black. Let's get an opaque white. So I've got a light blue with luminance. This is my genuine cobalt blue. I've got white with Derwent Lightfast because that's going to be more opaque. Actually, this one's not even white. This is Arctic, close enough. And then my polychromos black. And oh, I'm just going to stick that there. Now I can clean up my edges. Now it's really easy to clean everything up. Actually, I need a pale yellow too. Who has a good, actually, it's not yellow, but this one is my brown ochre 10%. That'll actually work nice. Yep. Thin that line out just a bit here. Going right around those edges. And then where there was a little smudge, I can go right over that with a pencil. And I need a, let's see, you will work. This one is a burnt ochre. I'm gonna do that right on the top so it's a little bit darker right under that upper lid. And that'll fade out into that lighter color. I'm just gonna let those overlap a bit. Oops. Okay. All over where the black watercolor was, I'm gonna go over that with a pencil too. It's gonna to make it super dark. I'm gonna pull the black right up to that so it's not this obnoxiously bright. And then I'm gonna go back over that with my blue. So see how now it's a much more muted, glossy look. Much better. Looks like we've got a little bit of blue right on the edge. I'm gonna use white over that lavender color. My goal is not to make it white, it's just to make it lighten a little bit. And it's not a perfect circle, so let that be a little wiggly here. Okay, and then I'm gonna clean that up right on the inside there with the black again. And see how fast this goes? Because I've got this nice watercolor base, like the color is just so rich so quickly. Okay, now I'm gonna switch over to my blue and let that start fading out as I work my way out. Actually, while I'm at it, I may as well grab my brown pencils. Um, let's see. I'm gonna use the Caran d'Ache. This one is Castle Earth is what I'm looking for. That one, so it's just a nice dark brown. I've got, this is Caput Mortem, that'll work. What else do I need in there? There's kind of a cream. I think the one I have out will work fine. Maybe a little bit of a yellowy tone. Do I have, let's see, what are you? Brown ochre? Eh, that's a little bit green. Don't think that's quite what I'm looking for. Raw umber. 
Let me see where my sample paper is. I can test it. If I can reach it. Oof. Yeah, yeah nah, maybe. I don't know. Let's see what else I've got. I think the, yeah, we've got some really good browns with Joe went light fast. Let's grab, I'm grabbing Ruby Earth, which is like a reddish brown. It's very similar to put more demonically. And I still need that yet kind of a golden color. Yellow ochre, maybe, maybe a little yellow ochre mixed in would look good. So that little handful of color should give me what I need. So the reason that I'm choosing most of these, if I, ideally, because I'm doing a lot of detail, I really like the polychromos for this, but the color, sometimes there's just a better color that I'm looking for closer to what I want in another brand, and so that's why I've chosen those. Okay, let's see. So this one, back to my brown ochre 10%. That's actually really good for out here. And I've got a piece of glassine under my hand so that I don't get the oils from my skin anywhere on the work. No smudging either. Let's play around and see which color I like. That one's good for some of it. Watching the direction of these feathers. You've got a more defined shadow that comes around the eye right here. And then I'm gonna to switch to a lighter color. I want more of a golden. That yellow ochre is not gonna work for me. I need a lighter brown. So I'm looking for a golden color that isn't too yellow yellow, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. So sandstone, that is it. That is perfect. Kind of an orangey, that'll work for me. Now, if you've used watercolor anywhere on your work and you go over it with the colored pencils and you think, hey, I wish I could use my odorless mineral spirits to blend this out, you can. It will not affect the watercolor underneath. You can totally go over it if you need to. I won't be doing that on this one, but you could if you wanted to. It does not mess up the watercolor. Let's grab some white. Derwent drawing Chinese white would be great. I don't have that over here. Because we want this to be soft anyway, that thicker pencil will actually work well. Oh yeah, much better for this. Nice soft look. And I'm pushing really hard there. I'm definitely burnishing to get that look take the blue and break that up a little bit so it fades out. And it's not that his feathers are blue, it's just that the way he, they're more of a grayish tone, but with the blue, well, the photographer probably hyped up the blue in here, but I like how it looks, so I'm including it. Um, but you've got, it's mostly gonna be the way that the shadows are hitting. To my own knowledge, these guys don't have actual blue feathers. Lighten some of that up. The sandstone color is really a nice addition. That kind, of, that orangey tone without being so too in your face orange. Let's take the black and define the feathers here. So I'm just kind of working my way around the eye. I started with the eye and then we'll go all the way around. Some little wispy feather guys there. Uh, let's do the white first over some of the blue. Soften that up. And then I'm gonna come back through with, let's do a little bit of the sandstone. And probably some cup mortem for these darker areas. See how great this is? I love that there are areas where I'm like, oh, I should have filled that in with a little bit more watercolor. <laughs> color pencil will fix it. Doesn't even matter. You do not have to be good at watercolor to do this mixed media. 
Watercolor is definitely one of the more difficult mediums to master. I would certainly not say that I've mastered it by any stretch of the imagination. I can make pretty paintings. That is a, a medium I haven't worked that much in until more recently, and even then not that much. So, but it, that doesn't mean you can't make something super pretty, especially if you're doing it as mixed media with watercolor or colored pencil over it. It, it fixes so many things that might've gone wrong. I mean, one of my favorite pieces right now that I have hanging in my own office is a watercolor. It's a fox in watercolor um, and colored pencil on top. I love it. And that was right when, towards the beginning of me starting to play with watercolor. So, you, um, but the, it's because of the colored pencil that I liked it so much, it made it very easy to fix anything that wasn't exactly how I wanted it. So you're like, here, I didn't get enough of these little black areas, no big deal, I can go over with the pencil now. Um, let's get some more of that sandstone right along the edge. Pull some little feathers in there. And that variation, I don't care if you use the perfect brown, the perfect orangey tone, the perfect whatever. It's just that you want variation in there. That is, that is the key. And let's do a little bit of castle earth around the edge. This is my, my Karen Dosh Luminance. It's probably my darkest brown brown. Like it's almost black, it's so brown. And this pencil is weird. It was, I remember the first time I used Karen Dosh pencils, or Karen Dosh Luminance. It is the only one that is almost a dry, scratchy feel. The end result looks just as good as all the other pencils, but it definitely feels different than everything, even right now, like it's very scratchy. But not scratchy in a, like it's, you know how if you've used certain uh, cheap graphite pencils or they'll get like nuggets in there that scratch the paper, that's not what's happening. It's just almost like it's a charcoaly dry feel to this pencil, it's a very odd. I have no idea why that pencil is different. And I remember years ago, I had asked Karen Dosh about that and the person commented or the, whoever the contact was, I emailed said, oh, that was something that they were working to fix. Well, it's been, I started using Karen Dosh Luminance, what, in 2014, 2015, like a long time ago. And yeah, it never changed. I don't mind. I mean, the, the pigment's great, but it is, it does have a weird chalky feel to it. Take another brown too. Oh, I need to sharpen that. Let's pull that in a bit more. So that transition from the black to um, between the white and the black has a bit of brown in between it. switching back and forth between some of these lights and darks. Now, any of my Karen Dosh Luminance or my Derwent Light Fast, those are gonna be more opaque pencils, whereas the Polychromos is gonna be, it mostly just goes darker, it's more translucent, so it's great for making things darker, but it doesn't, you in most color cases, it's not gonna lighten it up, so just keep that in mind, depending on what you're going for. Like, see how that shows up so well that I just did? Because that's a super opaque pencil. That same color or something very similar in the polychromos is going to, isn't really gonna show up as much. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, you just need to know it's a different thing, depending on what look you're going for. So we get the hint of some of these feathers. I don't need them exact, I just wanna go for semi-close. I like the, the polychromos too, because it, the being that it gets so much sharper and it hold, it's a harder lead, so it hold that, holds that point, I can't talk better. So the details on that, each of those brush strokes looks much smoother than the softer pencils of the other brands that I'm using. And again, it's not that that makes it a better pencil, it's just a difference you wanna be aware of, so depending on what look you're going for. Whoops, and then you can throw it on the floor. Oh didn't get too far, luckily. And like here, I want this to be a little bit lighter, so we'll use the sandstone and I'll come back through with some white. See if the feathers change directions.
Now let's say I had areas that I want to bring out bright, bright highlights of white. I can't use my watercolor for that. And you may be thinking while well, I was using watercolor, like the Doc Martens PH, what is, I can never get it right. Doc, P, Dr. PH Martens Bleed Proof White, that stuff. That is a water-based product. I can't put that now over the colored pencils. If I wanted to paint white on top of this, then I'm gonna wanna use my Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture from Powder Blender. But if I had not started colored pencil yet, then I could have used this stuff first before I started colored pencil. So you just need to make sure you're doing it in the right order. Now this area is not standing out as much as I would like. And it's not because it's not light enough. It's because what's next to it is not dark enough yet. So often when your lights don't seem light enough, it's because the darks are just not dark enough that are right next to it. So we will come through now and start getting some of that, those darks in. I'm using sandstone again, which is that really pretty golden orangey tone. Technical term there, golden orangey. They really should let me name colored pencils. They have the best names. Every purplish red color would be called magenta. Magenta one, magenta two. Or just magenta, you guess. It'd be a perfect job for me. No one would be frustrated at all. A little feather. See, I'm just going, kind of working around what needs to be darker, what needs to be lighter. A little bit of dark red on the edge here. I'm gonna pull that. I'm using Castle Earth. Use that Castle Earth and pull some dark definition in too. Don't overdo this, the dark in here. We just want a few spots. I'm gonna darken this up and I want these to be wispy, so I'm gonna let them overlap a bit. And make it a little bit thicker than what I've currently got. Especially right here needs to widen up quite a bit. And that is with black. See, with very little effort, look how dark that is. If I did not have a watercolor base, I was just putting this black pencil over the white paper, it is not going to look that dark. My chair is stuck on my carpet there. Hold on. This is one of my favorite mixed medias to work at. Like I'm finding myself, I wanted to sit here with the biggest stupid grin on my face because it's so much fun. Got some little wispy guys here. Let's sharpen that pencil. And actually, if you look at the reference photo, we've got these rows here and here where these feathers are more defined. So I'm gonna define some of that with the blue first in those little rows. And then just very lightly with the black, you could also switch to a gray, but black is what I already have out. So this will work just fine. I'm just using a light hand. And now I'm gonna do some of the little wisps that are sticking out here. I'm gonna do a few more around that edge making sure that they overlap. Give them a little fluffy face. Okay, and I'm using, this one is Ruby Earth. I'm gonna go around the edge of some of these between the black and the brown, or the lighter brown, I should say. 
I'm pushing pretty hard for most of this at this point because I want it to be really smooth. Oh, let's actually switch to Castle Earth. So that's not straight black. Really, at this point, it's not just about adding details, it's about adjusting our values. Get those darks darker, are the lights light enough. Well, really, the lights are light enough, it's that the darks next to them aren't dark enough, and so they don't look as light as they should be. Another of these reddish brown tones right in through here. Switch over to white. Let's clean this up. I'm pushing really hard with that pencil. Let's sharpen that. So like these areas, this is light enough. It just doesn't look like it because it's what's next to it isn't dark enough yet. So now I can come through with these darker colors, although that gets covered with the matte, so I don't need to spend too much time there. And if I burnish the white over it, it just softens that whole feather up. This looks harsher in the, that camera always makes it look a little bit harsher than it looks in person. Mine is a slightly softer looking. Okay, and then the same thing, we're gonna come in through this. I'm gonna use that sandstone color first in between the black and the brown areas, or black and the white, I'm sorry. And then this darker area, let's switch that ruby earth will work fine. Darken that up, that gets cut off by the matte too though, so I'm not gonna to spend too much time worrying about that. And then let's darken up the black areas as well. Some of those can be a bit bigger now. This is a way, if you have used colored pencil in the past and you get frustrated that it just takes so long, watercolor underpainting, my gosh, does that make things go faster. Like the color saturation is so good and so dark in a way like without, that takes a long time to get colored pencil to do that. Um, on its own. Not that it can't be done, it just takes a lot longer. And I know a lot of people don't like how long colored pencil takes. That is certainly a way you can solve that time issue. Oops, dropping pencils. Now I'm just looking through little areas that I want to darken or lighten. So like this here, let's darken that. And I'm gonna add a bit of blue detailing in here in that shadow. Pull some out in here as well. lighten this area of his eye just a bit along the bottom. You can't really tell on the that camera, but it is it's there. And this whole area can actually be a fair amount darker. Now 
Now it's really easy to make a couple of pencil strokes and think, wow, that looks like feathers, that looks great. And then make all the pencil strokes looking the exact same. Variation, switch direction, look at the photo, where does it switch direction? Use a bit of mortem here to get some color saturation over that black. I do the same over here. got these little lines that go along the back of its head. Some of them need to be short and thicker. Let's see, use a little bit of Castle Earth in here and do a little bit of Capit Mortem. See how these feathers curve up and away from his head. Get a few light guys in here. I'm going to go over that with the sandstone. So they're lighter because I put the white down first, they'll show up even better, but white was too bright. Now this area, I've got a little smudge and I can see where it came off on my finger. I wanna fix that, let me take an eraser. I need to make sure that there's nothing on the eraser, so I'm actually gonna take the back of it and make sure that's clean. So I can lift that. There we go. Now one of the things you can do, if you're doing something like this and you are trying to keep the background white, but it doesn't, if you get a smudge somewhere, you can take your, um, your watercolor and splatter. Do it like a, a cool splattery effect in the background with some blues and browns or whatever. And that will hide any smudges. Now, I know I said don't do watercolor after you've already done the colored pencil, but in this case, I would just wipe off anywhere where watercolor might've stuck on top of here. Or, or you could even take a clean piece of paper, cut it out the size of the owl, so when you splatter, none of it gets on the owl. But that is an option if your background doesn't stay light enough. Few little details and we are done with this guy. Actually, this area here could have more blue too. Push that back. I totally forgot these white feathers. When you sit in front of something for too long, you sometimes start losing, like not noticing things you meant to go back over. Okay, and let me show you what that looks like on this camera because this is a little bit harsh. It always is on that one. And I may, I keep noticing little, little areas where I want some wisps. Actually, I've got a little smudge over here as well. Pull that up. So you should be able to see a bit better the soft look that you're not really getting on camera. So there is the finished little owl.